Pacific Viewpoint is proudly brought to you by South Pacific Loans, caring for the community's financial needs. Call us today on 0800 88 98 88. Good evening and welcome to Pacific Viewpoint. Culture has long been proclaimed to be part of our identity. Losing one's culture is therefore believed to be a loss of our identity, something many living in a foreign land face where culture and language are seldom practiced and easily forgotten. Recently, the premiere of a new independent film, My Lost Kainga, was shown in Auckland and is the brainchild of producer Tony Fuemana. Filmed in Tonga, the first film ever made there, stars Tongan actor Kelolane Makakaufaki. Kelolane plays Mia, a young Tongan woman who was born in Tonga, raised in Australia and loses her culture identity and language because she becomes lost in her new Western identity. Pacific Viewpoint recently interviewed Tony and Kelo Lane and here's the interview. Good evening to you both. Tell us a little bit about the film, Tony. The movie is called My Lost Gainga and it's about uh, a story of a uh, Tongan girl who's, who grows up in Tonga and then is taken away from Tonga and then actually has the rest of her life in Australia. So her ed education and all her right. friends are Australian and then so she loses her culture. Then she's sent back to uh, Tonga for a, a special thing and when she gets back she's like a fish out of water and so she has to learn to fall back in love with her uh, culture. So it's, uh, it's a, a, basically a love story about how somebody falls back in love with their culture. No guy, just the culture. So who is Mia? I'm Mia. <laughs> okay, Mia. <laughs> so you're acting Mia? Yes, I am. Okay. My, my name is Carolyn Makaufaki. The story is, is Mia Mafi. Mia Mafi. And who is Mia Mafi? Basically, she is the, uh, the character, uh, the lead character. And where, did, where did you get the Mia Mafi from? We decided that, I think we decided that in Tonga. We just, we just thought, what, what's a, what's a very, very catchy name, a Tongan name? And I just said Mia. Mia, very short and easy to, to remember. Mm. <laughs> okay. There's no, okay. There was no rhyme or reason between it. Yeah. It was just trying to get a, a name that was neutral. Mm. All oh, right, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. So is this based on a true story or a, a drama or, or just a, a made-up story? From, from my point of view, it's based on a story that many Pacific Islanders can identify with. It's a story of losing your culture. Most islanders who come to New Zealand who are brought up here um, lose their culture, lose their language, and so they become uh, distant from their roots. Right. And for Pacific Islanders and Māoris, it's a big part of our life, you know. We want to be connected to our, to our roots. And for Carol Ann, um, acting as Mia, she identified with the role. And so, you know, the story is, is, is something that most Pacific Islanders will relate to, but also people who left Wales or Ireland and, you know, and grew up in a different country, they'll relate to it as well. So yeah. what genre is it? Um, I would say it's um, light drama, uh, just a, you know, uh, drama, comedy, it's, yeah. Humorous? Sort of, yeah, there's, there are parts of it that are humorous because, you know, the Pacific Island uh, yeah. culture is, is quite funny, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of it's a little quick, you know, especially Tongans, they do a little lot of things a little bit different than the rest of the islands. Right. And so, uh, so you know, when people watch it, they'll, they'll pick it up and have a bit of a laugh. Okay, what motivated you to produce this film? Uh, for me, just getting that story out, really. It's something that, um, that it's something when I first met Carol Ann, we, I, we, we were going to do the story first in Samoa, but the uh, person that we were going to use, um, something happened to her, so he did it in Tonga. And so the, the, the story developed really with Carol Ann and myself, and um, the motivation was just to tell the story, because it's something that for myself I've been through, um, something that Carol Ann's been through, and a lot of our friends have been through as well. So you are the producer, and for you, Carlo, My Lost Kainga was the first movie ever shot in Tonga and in Tongan. How do you feel about that? I feel very proud. I think I feel very, very blessed. Um, I, I really thank God for, for the opportunity that, um, that I was able to, to meet Tony and to be able to, you know, to be casted as the lead, but also to, to have mm. in, in my home country, in my yeah. own Tongan language, which I love very much. I, I do hope this film will inspire um, touch a lot of people, but also inspire a lot of Pacific youth to, to fall in love with their culture, fall in love with their language, and um, and just accept who you are, you know. Um, we're, we're beautiful 
people from the Pacific. And we have so many stories to tell and I, and I do hope to continue uh, making a more Pacific stories, making more movies about the Pacific um, for, our, for our people around the world. It's just been overwhelming, mm, the support mm. we've had. <laughs> so was it all filmed in Tonga? Yeah, the whole lot. The whole lot? Yeah. Yeah, the whole lot. Wow. <laughs> and how long did it take to, for a complete production? The whole thing. Um, it took a, long, a lot longer than I thought. Um, the filming itself was, I think, how long were we in Tonga for? I can't uh, remember. A month, almost yeah, a month. Almost there to a film month. It, and we were filming every day, apart from Sunday. Yeah, Sunday was our day off. OK, how and where did you two meet? I was working on a radio station and then I interviewed um, Caroline because she had come over to the Pacifica Festival and um, at that stage we, I was looking at doing the movie and it was in the traditional... Uh, How long trend. ago was that? That would have been 2008 I think it was? Yes, yeah. 2008 and I didn't realise he already had the project and they were recasting and so when he was interviewing me on radio I didn't realise that he was already had the project and, and was looking for someone to cast as, as Mia, at the lead, um, with what happened to the Samoan girl. So when I explained to him my story, my story was very similar to Mia, you know, uh, born in, Do in Donga, raised in Australia. Grandma sent me back to work, um, to do two years of voluntary work, and I basically fell in love my, my Tongan culture all over again. And then he um, emailed, uh, emailed a few weeks later and asked, would you be interested to do an independent film, you know, this... Um, cast as Mia as a lead and I've always been passionate about performing arts and so right. performing is my first love and I thought this would be a great opportunity for me not only um, professionally but also a great way for to showcase Tonga my country and in the Tongan language which I love so much and um, and, and I said yes <laughs> and you you saw the character of Mia and you found it in her basically yes I mean it, it's okay to have a story mm -hmm. but it, it's hard to find you know, like an actor or someone that can bring out all to live that. She'd already lived it in her life, and so it wasn't right. that far away from, you know, her own right. life, and so it wasn't that difficult. So being in Tonga, she knew the culture. You know, being also um, had because she'd gone through the Western education, she'd understand understood that part. She understood the restrictions of a of a Tongan, and so the story wasn't too far away from her life, mm. or from, mm. well, actually mm. away from most of our lives if we, you know, for Pacific Islanders who grew up in New Zealand or Australia. What struggles did you go through producing it? Uh, from, from my point of view, from directing, it was being in a different country, a different language, different culture. Uh, that was my biggest struggle. Um, but it was a challenge because of what I want to do long term. And so I thought the best way to start, because I'd already done documentaries about the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And so putting something together wasn't that hard. So really it was the language and the culture. Um, uh, that was the biggest struggle really from a, just a director's and a producer's point of view. Right. It might have been different from an, from an actor's point of view. Right. Mm. What was your biggest obstacles? Uh, biggest obstacle would have been, um, I, I guess, the island getting the, mixing the island way of thinking with the way that I was brought up, which was Western. So I wanted things done in a particular way, but Tongans wanted done it differently. And I've been, I've come across it in the past. And so New Zealand born. Yeah. And so it was just a matter of adapting everybody, because if they didn't adapt, I'll just kick them off the movie. See you later. <laughs> 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 and here's New End. <laughs> <laughs> All but, right. You know, I think that was the biggest. Um, we didn't have any problems. Like uh, everybody in Tonga was really helpful to us. You know. They, they really helped us out. They went out of the way. The police would, you know, we would see a policeman on this road and he would stop and help us, you know, mm. and, and all those sorts of things. We, we weren't really limited by anything. A lot of people just opened their doors to us. And uh, so I'm really thankful to the, the Tongan community that helped us out, even though they didn't really know what we were doing. Because, um, you know, we were yeah. doing a feature yeah. movie and, and how do you explain that when there isn't anything to compare it to? Right. Is there any controversial issues in the film? From my point of view as a New Aean, um, no, but I'm not too sure from a Tongan point of view because there are things in it that we push the boundaries, like for the for our character Mia running through Queen Tolotti College and she was wearing shorts, really short shorts. <laughs> that that would have been controversial for a lot of it was, yeah. It was very and judging by your uh, <laughs> yes, that's an, an we other had thing. to ask permission. Did you? To wear shorts. They're very short. They're very short. <laughs> but, you know, it's just to play the character. But Ma'ata Javier, who played my grandmother, she's yeah. the principal. And so she said yes to everything. And even, and, but she did have to ask permission did she from say the. Yes to from, everything. 
she said yes to everything, but oh. she had to ask permission from the church yeah. that we that we can come and film. And and but in so, shorts. Yeah, so she knew we were, <laughs> she knew I had to run through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. she also, was fine with and that. And also uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, her pushing the yeah. character into the pool. You know, that was another thing. Um, you know. Yes, because um, he had asked my other to give me a hiding the Tongan way for me to because I, I, I had arrived at, at her house in Quinsalote and I said no I'm going to a Dateline hotel because it's more classy and she came to Dateline and so her the scene was that you saw was for her to take me back so yeah. he wanted Ma'ata to give me a Tongan hiding. Ma'ata did, um, does not support violence, did not so she asked um, Tony no I don't want to hit Galo <laughs> can I just push her into the pool instead and so that was it so we decided okay. Yeah. <laughs> and was that okay with you? Yeah that was fine. We just wanted we wanted to something that would bring the character um, because she was on a you know looking down at her culture yeah. because she had come to take her grandmother away and uh, take her back home put him to rest home and you know that would be it she yeah. could go back to her life yeah. and and so we wanted something that would be a shock to her system because that would have either been uh, getting a hiding and you know or um, something like this so it would brought her right down to uh, make her think what um, what's actually happening. And so from there, she slowly has to, you know, um, win back the respect of herself, really, to understand her culture, because her, uh, she'd forgotten all about it. She'd forgotten that, you know, um, you don't come and just do that. And you can do that in Australia yeah. or New Zealand, but don't just turn up my house and say, mm. get out of here, you're going to rest home. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favourite part in the filmmaking process? The favourite part, really, for me, was seeing... Um, Carolyn adapt the uh, character of Mia to the story be because it would have been easy for her just to look at it and just do how, you know, to make a mess of it. But she actually took the, the character and uh, developed it uh, a lot further or deeper than I thought she would. Like, she actually was able to identify it totally but, pl but play it as a different character, not really herself. And right. so mm -hmm. there are scenes in it where she was, you could tell that she was really looking down at everybody else as, as Tongans. Like one part of the movie is that when she got picked up at the airport, she had to sit at the back of a van uh, with all these guys who'd come from a plantation, mm -hmm. and she didn't want to do that. And you could see the look on her face that she was disgusted that she could lower herself to be like these guys, and these guys were making fun of her in Tongan. And so those sort of things, um, when, you, when you're looking through a, a camera and you, and you see these sort of things... Uh, uh, Love it. Yeah. Love it. I love yeah. that one. Love that one. Anyway, what is your favourite part? I think I, I don't have a favorite part. I, I loved all of all of them. The whole, the, the, the favorite thing for me was the whole process of being in a first. I've done little bits of television in Australia, but this was my first feature film as the lead, and and in my language. So that was a bonus for me, and to be able to see that the local talent. We used a lot of locals to in the movie. See my uh, Maata Javier from Gonzalo the College take up a role and really get into it and, and become this grandmother not herself, but in character. And that was the favourite part of, of me, learning from mm. Tony, mm. learning that the whole idea of, 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 of doing a movie, how it's done and the process of it and the post-production as well. And But to do it in your own language, in your own country, it's just um, it's something that is it's really priceless. And, and to, to be able to do the first one, I think it's really... Because, you know, in our culture, there's not many Tongan actresses out there. No. There's many of us, not well, many of us. you're the know. first one. <laughs> I suppose so. And so that was my favourite part of all, just being able to be um, to work together with an amazing team. But right. also to be able to, to work with a director who really adapted to the Tongan culture. What Tony said earlier, he really had to learn from me and my other. We were his ears and eyes on, on everything. Um, and most everything that you see really is improvised. We had a script, but we couldn't we couldn't do it. Um, it. We just knew it was not appropriate for our culture. And so we improvised everything. So everything. in Tonga, she was your director. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, was, it was easy for me to write a story. You know, I had uh, point A, B, C and D. But put it in reality, where yeah. characters have to come out and, uh, uh, to life. Mm. You know, if I say, if I write down, okay, this character goes from point A to point B. But in reality, when, when you got somebody who has to live it, they go, actually, no, they wouldn't do that because if we did that, we'd probably get kicked out of Tonga. <laughs> and so, you know, so just a lot of adaption and, and a lot of, um, uh, of me sitting down and thinking, okay, I just have to change my way of thinking. Yeah. Like the our yeah. ending of the movie, which was the main part of the movie, changed about an hour before we shot it.
I came from Tonga in 2006. I need a future here with my family. I decided to buy a house. I went to the bank and they turned me down. So I went to South Pacific Loan and they decided to give me a second chance. So they upgrade my uh, credit and then I went back to the bank and they offered me a loan. And then I buy this house and here I am today. I highly recommend anyone who haven't tried South Pacific Loan, try South Pacific Loan, because they give me a chance to be here with my house today. Give us a call or come and see us because we understand the Pacific people. What do you think the most important, memorable, significant, the plot or the characters? The, the plot, I think. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the whole idea of, um, of a story t sort of asking you to go and find out where you come from, I think that's the most important part of it. The, the characters hopefully bring that story to life. I hope that when people see it, they can see that they, what we're really trying to do is say, look, um, are you somebody who doesn't know your, your, your roots? Then maybe you should go because you don't know what else you'll find you might find your connection. I, mm. I remember when my sister and I went back to Niue, she had an instant connection with Niue Island. Mm. You know, she knew that was where her home was. Uh, and I know other people have done the same. So I hope people, when they know about the story, understand it, you know, and uh, uh, listen to it, that they'll go, OK, maybe I should just maybe pick up the phone and arrange for a trip back to Niue or Tonga or Samoa, you know, and find where I come from. And I really hope, like any stories, any of the Pacific Island stories I do, that that's, that's what they'll think. Got to go home. Got to find out what's happening. Got to, you know, um, if my country, uh, like for New Year, 1,500 people left, get the rest of them going back there, build the economy up, you know, get people thinking, going back to the islands. And do you think these storylines in the plot, these characters brought these um, lines to life? Yeah, I believe so. I, I have enough footage of it, uh, got enough headaches trying to get it out. But really, I think they did. I, I really believe that they got, I got the best that I could at with people who weren't experienced in acting. You know, and that's why people won't, won't wait, because Carolyn was the only um, person who knew how to act. So all the others sort of improvised. Okay. What do you say to the criticism that suggests that my lost kainga promotes unhealthy eating. Uh, there's no reference to anything to revolving around food, but there'll always we be criticism. We don't have a roast pig in it. There always be criticism. <laughs> Everything you do, you would have known this with the program. You didn't do it well enough. The you know the the, the lighting wasn't. Damn it! If you do, damn it! Yeah, that's right. And so you know, for, if somebody's going to point the finger, they're going to they're going to they're going to point the finger at somebody who's going to do something different. You know, I think that uh, the. And that's better. really interesting. My mum actually, my parents and my family didn't actually want me to do it. They were against it because they're very conservative. My father's a minister and I'm the odd one out of the family. And they didn't want me to, just to be out there in the criticism and stuff. And I said, mum, this is what I, this is what I love. And this is, it comes with the industry. Mm. You, it doesn't matter. People will say some bad things anyway, but, but it was really, you know, trying to yeah. tell her to understand it, you know, just being a normal mum. Why can't you be just a normal daughter? <laughs> <laughs> well, you are normal, actually. You're you know, they don't think, they don't yeah. think yeah. that performing arts is, you know, they're very conservative. I come from the Javier side. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so, yeah. okay. Yeah. Hey guys, stand tall, you're doing great. You're doing great. Who are your target audience? Uh, Pacific Islanders. How about children? Yes. Yeah, they can watch it. They can All learn. age groups, yeah. really. With yeah. parents or? Parents, yes. With parents? Mm -hmm. Is that PG or yeah. um, PG? Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Or, or G? Uh, it is P, no. The, the G is the one where it's general, so it's PG, yeah. Where can people go to to watch this um, uh, movie? At the moment, we're showing it in Auckland. After that, we're going to planning on taking it back to Tonga. We're arranging to do that, and also we're planning to take it to Sydney and also to the States. Now the film has been made, are you both satisfied? Uh, yes. Uh, I think yes as a director, no, you're never satisfied. Mm -hmm. You know, something, when you have a, a, a something that you want to do, you sort of think, I could have done that better. But I'm happy with what I have. You're happy I'm happy with, with what I yeah. got, uh, the, how we did it. Any colour? 
Um, I have no regrets about the movie, but, um, you know, in terms of, you know, for myself, I don't really like watching myself on TV or and stuff. So I remember when we were uh, doing the editing and me, you know, doing the narration and the voiceover, I was watching it, I go, oh, I would have done that maybe a little bit differently. And But it was good. It was a great process, a great way for me to, to, to know what it's like, you know, to, to, to be in front of the camera and to take a character and become it. So, yes, it, it gave me, a, I learned a lot. I'm so blessed to, to be part of it and to be part of this wonderful project and looking forward to making more, telling stories and, and hopefully inspiring our Pacific people to do the same. <laughs> Tony, Carla, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Over the upcoming programs of Pacific Viewpoint, we'll be profiling Pacific businesses in the community. Tonight, starting with EMT Money Transfer in Parkinson in Biosco Headstones in Memorials. Talo falava luana ole ale ingoa ole company. Fartai lava se tita ole ingoa ole company ole e poki fau money transfer. Ua fa pupuina po tawina ole EMT ole winga ole e poki fau ole se amatanga fau. E ma fai ona e fa iloa ile atunu le raid olo ia ile time nei. Fartai lava mole fafsili ole raid le ia ile time nei. E talafi te walo, o se rates le lei tele ma talafi angai, ma o lo umato tu ina atu fo i rates le lei lava i asu taitasi i uma mole fso so ani atu le malo le atu nu. E ma fai i ona e faa i loa nesi tau au au nanga? Ia faaf tei lava, o le tele lava umato au au nanga lo ye tei minei, ia o lo pei ona lau si le fia le atu nu, o le te wina fo i leo tupe li tu stupe. A fa pio ye sao tu tu pe sa moa, ye ma fai ona tu i na tonu lau account, o le tongi na o pili sa moa, e ma fai ona tongi a ngele pili a lau ai nge sa moa, o le isi au au nanga o le fai a leo fa atau, a e piki ina ya a maui matafele, o tasi vo au au nanga o lo o fifi a tela ile ma do le atu nu ul neiva i taimi, o le fai a leo rusiaki, E ma whai lawa o nga tala i so se la la o le e in seri sa moa. Pe e ma whai fo o nga tala i le malai wha alele i whareo. E i a ini wha apitoa mo le aso o tina? A whaf tai mo le whaf sili o le tai minei. O lo o e le o iei se wha apitoa lawa mo aso tina o nga ultu langa nei. O lo o mato tu i nga tu lawa i a reit le lei mo aso u ma lawa i le tau sanga atoa. O so le whaapitoa la e alu i asa uma la wā i le reit, whata si ai male whiita ngō whie. Let the Samoan people know where you are and your phone number. Whaapitoa i tele Samoa mō lau lango lango mai o le mātou e dress po le tua atusi o lau i le nō mera whitu, Princess Street o Tau, o le mātou telefoni o le lua whitu o o whāwalu o, lua whitu o o whāwalu o, Fafitai tele sa moe lau fafunganga. Fafitai luana. Fafitai. Moe lau fafu ina tupe sa moe ma Australia ma tonga. Piki tupe Australia ma sa moe pe tu ufo i sose account in New Zealand nei. Fafitau tongi nei, piki a a mau. Faya siaki tala ina ili malai wa lele. Tala ina o matau tupe a pia ili nik money transfer. Po sava ili mari money transfer. O le matau tua tusi o le numera fitu Princess Street o tau. Tala ina le matau o fisa le afo le valu le tae au ili lima ili afia. Aso nga fua ili asu wharele, ma le afo le valu le tae au ili afo su lua ili asu to nai. Fafso o tae mai le matau telefoni ili lua fitu o o fawalu o, o le lua fitu ono lua tolu fatasi. Mo nisi fa mataranga, fafo tae tele sa moa ili au lalako mai. Hi Peter and welcome to the program. Peter, can you give us a brief outline of uh, Parkinson and Bowskull and what you can do for our community? Uh, Parkinson and Bowskull have been giving 123 years of service in terms of providing memorials to the people of New Zealand. 123 years, that's a long time. It is. Well, headstones are very, very important to our Pacific peoples, as you know, but over the years there has been some questionable businesses. What makes your company stand out from the others? 
Well, with those many years of uh, service and knowledge, we know what suits our clients. We only select the best granite. Basically, we, that allows us to provide a really good service to our clients. And that way we can do give it at our best price. That's basically our promise to the community that you know we are there to serve them. Peter, our people like to honour their loved ones passing with a memorial or headstone. Mm -hmm. Are you a company we can trust to do that for our community? Well, Satita, we've been uh, servicing the uh, needs of the Polynesian community for many, many years. Quite simply, the people that deal with us, they trust us, we keep our word, we honour our prices, and we provide a service to respect the memorial that they require for their loved ones. So, you know, we just simply listen to people's needs. I mean, we are down-to-earth people, just like our customer, majority of our customers. Peter, pricing is always an issue when choosing something. What can you offer mm. our Pacific people? We have a complete range of headstones from very small plaques to go onto graves up to the very biggest headstones. And uh, within that range, prices can vary from a thousand dollars up to what people are prepared to spend. Within that, regardless of the prices, we try and make sure that the quality is there. We do not stint on the quality of the memorial that we provide for people. Do you ever have any specials? Yes, we have specials. I mean, in all our five branches, we have special package deals where people come in and the price that we give them is a complete price. We do have various items of stock at, at, at special or discounted prices. Purchasing a, a headstone, Peter, can be very daunting idea to a Pacific Islander. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through in the process of purchasing a headstone? People will just come into our showroom, uh, they'll look at the range of, of headstones we've got, they may have received one of our brochures or even looked at our website or they may have been even recommended for, by another family uh, from what they've seen in the cemetery. So when they come into the showroom we can show them all the options, we can find headstones that will meet their budget and basically it's then a matter of them deciding which options they prefer in terms of colour and designs mm. and shapes. And from there we firm up on the price so they then know exactly what the cost of the completed memorial is. And after that we then work through with the families in terms of the wording to go onto the headstone, in terms of the portrait, the artwork. We work through that with the family to give them a paper proof that shows them exactly what the headstone is like when it's finished. We don't actually put all the lettering onto the headstone until such time as the family say they're happy with the layout and they've signed it off and checked that all the dates are correct and the spelling's correct. And where can we find you and how can we contact you? We have uh, showrooms in five locations. We have them in Onihanga, where our manufacturing base is. We also have a branch in Otara Shopping Centre, one in Glen Eden, one at Albany, and also in Tauranga. So basically you were nearly serving the whole of New Zealand? Yeah, on top of that, we do work throughout New Zealand and we obviously export quite a bit to the various parts of the South Pacific. If any relative from New Zealand wanting to send a headstone to their relative um, back to the islands, can you do that? Yes, we do. We are sending headstones overseas all the time. So basically there's no problem with that at all. Um, there's no GST payable on the exports of the headstones if we arrange the shipping, etc. We make purpose-built crates for the headstones to go in. In the last 20 years, I can't think of any that have been damaged during the transit. And we do cover them for insurance as well. And the finally, we obviously make sure it's there in time for the unveiling. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is the most important thing. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Peter, thank you for your time. Thank you, Sadita. If you would like your business profiled, you can email us on info at pacifica.tv or you can contact us on 09 239 2511. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. Make sure you tune in next week. Until then, bye for now. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.